Welcome back everyone. We have a video to get into today that I think is a little sad. It's especially sad if you're a Dollar General investor. And this is one company that I've covered before. I've looked at the fundamentals of Dollar General and it looked like a pretty good company. In fact, this is one that I've highlighted is one of those companies that's outperformed the market for a long period of time. For over a decade, Dollar General has compounded at a faster rate than the S&P 500. Through a combination of growing earnings, a little multiple expansion, and a lot of buybacks, this company has outperformed to a large extent. But what we see here is that it's running into trouble. And this company's been running into trouble all year long. Today, it's down 13%. Not a good day for Dollar General, but then year to date, it looks even worse. It's down 44% year to date. This is one of, if not the worst performing company in the entire S&P 500. So Dollar General has been completely crushed. It started off beginning this year, not looking good. Dollar General was dragged down. The stock price was trending down for a long period of time while the S&P 500 was going to the moon. But then we have the earnings report, back in May, and that one is where they give the first impression that they're running into trouble. They said, hey, look, we're facing some macroeconomic events. Our shoppers seem to be a little bit resistant at this point, and the stock dropped from $200 per share down to 160. Then it even started to trend lower, and then we got to this most recent earnings report today where it's down 13%, and they've run into more trouble. So things have not gone well for this company. It's just been a struggle this year, and the big question is, why? Why is Dollar General, in particular, struggling so bad, especially against other retailers, like Costco, for example? Let's go ahead and take a look at Costco. This is the one physical retailer that I own. Costco's up 22% year to date. The company releases their sales metrics every single month, and they're doing great. Revenue's growing, the profits look in line, Costco continues to grow as per usual. So that's the main thing I wanted to focus on here, highlighting some of the key differences between Dollar General and a retailer like Costco. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first thing I want to point out is that I have two public portfolios. The Story Fund is the one that I track every single week on this channel, so you can follow along, see how these investments do. But the main retailer that I hold in this one is an online retailer, which is Amazon. And the reason that I like Amazon as a retailer is not really because of their retail business. See, the way that I look at it, Amazon's retail is basically a Trojan horse. And inside of that Trojan horse is Amazon Prime membership. So Amazon sells you the cheap retail, the convenient selection, the two-day shipping, but you have to have the Prime membership. That Prime membership gives them flexibility. It's this nice annuity stream of income that's super high margin. So they have this nice residual income from the membership, and then they sell stuff, and whether they make money or not on the actual retail, they don't have to really concern themselves with it. The other thing that Amazon has, stuffed inside of that Trojan horse, is the ads business. Amazon has so much traffic on Amazon.com that they can put sponsored listings at the top. They can sell those sponsored listing spots for a lot of money. That's got to be an 80% plus margin business. It costs them nothing to put those ads at the top. And Amazon's targeted ads are incredibly, incredibly effective. So Amazon has a low quality business, which is online retail. In and of itself, that business is no good. But inside of that Trojan horse of that bad business are two really good businesses attached to it. Overall, making it so that the Amazon retail business is worthwhile. Now, the other company that I own that's a retailer, and it's the only physical retailer that I own, is in my passive income portfolio. This is my main one. I have in the consumer category here. This is it. Costco. I've spoken about this company repeatedly. When I do analysis on Lowe's and Home Depot and Target and Walmart, Costco and I compare them together, I continually come back to the conclusion that Costco is a lower risk business. It faces lower chance of disruption, lower chance of this type of thing happening to it than other businesses. Now, a lot of people counter and they say, Joseph, Costco's such an expensive company. It trades at a lower free cash flow yield and it has a higher PE ratio. That's correct. But I believe that Costco should be valued at a higher valuation because the company's lower risk. When you factor in the amount of risk, you lower the discount rate and the valuation of this company makes more sense. So I've been investing in this company for years. I believe strongly that Costco is vastly superior to the majority of retail companies. I also believe that over the fullness of time, in the next 20 or 30 years, I think Costco is going to outperform 90% of retailers 
that exist today, even the ones that are big retailers that seem very strong. Because despite the valuation concerns, Costco operates a business model that is incredibly, incredibly resilient. They have a business model that again, is a lot like Amazon's and that Costco's is a Trojan horse. And inside of that low cost warehouse retail business that in and of itself is not that great, they have the membership. Costco is a place that you cannot buy product if you're not a member. Can't buy one thing. You have to become a member of the warehouse. When they get you in that membership and you go in that warehouse and you see the walls of stacked merchandise, the high-end electronics, the carefully curated amount of merchandise they have at super low cost, it becomes addicting. And you realize that Costco gives you better treatment than every other place. Costco shoppers love Costco. They are addicted to the company. To them, it's not just a retailer. It is the place where they go to get the best value anywhere. The return policy of the company is second to none. It creates a ton of brand loyalty. You can return anything almost at any time, except for some select electronics. So I keep looking at this company and I compare it to other retailers. Whether you stack up Home Depot, Lowe's, Dollar General, Target, Walmart, Costco continually comes out a step above in my analysis. So that's the reason that I continue to buy Costco over other great retailers like Target or Dollar General. I think it's better. I think the membership model is better. Costco doesn't like to make money off of their products. They like to make money by keeping their products low, their volume high, their customers happy, and the membership. Around 70% of Costco's net income comes from the membership alone. So Costco really isn't as much of a retail business as it is a membership business, a subscription business. It is a warehouse distribution platform with a subscription model. So when you start seeing it through a different lens, it becomes difficult to compare this company to other retailers. So right there, we have some of the key differences between Costco, Amazon, and Dollar General. And we can look at how these details play out in a company like this. This is the quarter they just reported this morning. They said to begin with that net sales, which is revenue, increased by 3.9% to 9.8 billion. So barely a nudge up in revenue. Their revenue is flattening out, it's decelerating, it's gone down from the eight to 10%, now to 4%. Same store sales have decreased by 0.1%. So same store sales going flat is not a good thing. You want that around anywhere from five to 7%. I think anywhere from 7% upwards, very strong for a retailer, but that's flat now. Operating profits decreased by 24%. That's because they're marking down inventory. They have too much stuff, they can't get rid of it, so they're having to mark it down, which decreases their profitability. Their diluted earnings per share has decreased 28%, which was way lower than analyst estimates, down to $2.13 per share. So the year-over-year -year EPS of the company is going down, and then we have year-to-date cash flows from operations of 726 million. What they leave out here is they also have a lot of capex. So their cash flows actually are going down as well. So everything from the revenue to the margins to the amount of free cash flow, none of this looks good. It's a really bad quarter. And then to make things even worse, we look at the outlook. They say the company is taking certain actions to accelerate the pace of inventory reduction. That's gonna be price cuts, lower margins, and they have to make more investments in labor, further elevating in-store experience and better service to customers. So they have to lower prices and they're increasing expenses, making it so that they're going to see an incremental operating profit headwind of 170 million. And if we look at the earnings per share revision trend for the company, it's basically all down. They have 27 earnings revision downward this year. So revision downward after revision downward. So again, this doesn't look good for Dollar General. We know all of the metrics are going down and the stock is selling off as a result. But again, why is this happening to Dollar General and it's not happening to something like Costco? When I was considering this question of why Costco is doing so well, Dollar General is struggling, I think it comes down to one simple answer. This is my best guess of the reason behind it. Let's go ahead and meet the demographic of the two different companies. We can look at the demographic of Dollar General. This is their shopper. Numerator, which is an analysis firm, found that Dollar General's typical shopper is an older worker with a high school education who lives in a two-person household in a rural area and earns less than 40,000 per year. The typical shopper tends to be white, but the store is also popular with black customers. Okay, so when I read this, the part that I think is interesting or important to investors 
is the demographic of income of the individuals that shop at Dollar General. They make on average less than 40,000 per year. Now I know the areas that they live have a lower cost of living, so it's not directly comparable to other places, but even factoring in the cost of living, 40,000 per year for a two person household, that does not leave a lot of discretionary income. And that makes these type of shoppers thrive in certain conditions where they have stimulus, they have money to spend, there's low interest rates and they can get loans, but that type of shopper is also not resilient to any turn in the environment. If anything changes, 40,000 per year doesn't give you a lot of leniency. You have no discretionary spending there. Think about that, that is not a lot of money for two people. Now we compare that to Costco. Here's another study that shows the demographic that shops at Costco. It's important to note that the typical Costco shopper has considerably higher household income than those of Target and Walmart, $128,000 on average. That I believe is the difference in outcomes here. The typical Dollar General shopper makes $40,000 a year. The typical Costco shopper makes $128,000 a year. So a Costco shopper literally makes on average over three times as much. So I believe that's the biggest difference here. The biggest distinction between one retailer and the other is the demographics that shop at these companies and the demographics that they're targeting. Now I've looked at the demographic of the viewer that I have of this channel. And if you're watching this video, you likely make more than 40,000 a year with your household income. Most of the people that are focused on investing, that are looking at investing discretionary money and building up individual investment accounts, they have on average higher education, higher income level, more discretionary spending. But you have to look at this through the perspective of the customer of the investment that you have. If you're a customer of Costco and you're making 130,000 a year, you likely have a pretty stable job that's a little bit more resilient in economic turmoil, and you have way more discretionary spending. So your amount of income is far more resilient than the $40,000 per year Dollar General income. And so if you're invested in Dollar General, that's fine. I think the company will probably recover long-term, but you have to know that this one is going to be far more sensitive to macroeconomic events and the economy and interest rates than Costco. It's just gonna be more of a volatile holding. So that's my thoughts overall. I thought I'd jump in and just give some perspective here, share why I think the company's struggling, but let me know if you agree or disagree. I'd be interested to know your thoughts.